morning. Welcome to the Planning Commission for the City of Wheat Ridge, December 19th, 2013. May I have a roll call of the members? Ann Brinkman. Present. Steve Timms. Here. Scott Ohm. Here. Amanda Weaver. Absent. Tracy Gildner. Here. Silky Pop. Here. Ellen uh, Bucknam. Present. <laughs> Sorry. Can we have a Pledge of Allegiance, please? I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. So before we move on, please put your phones on. Vibrate, mute, whatever you do. Thank you. Um, may I have approval of the order of tonight's revised agenda? Madam Chair, I move to approve the order of uh, tonight's revised agenda. I'll second. Please vote. Please vote. Motion approved, six to zero. Thank you. May I have approval of the minutes of December 5th, 2013? I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes. I'll second. Please vote. Right here. Motion approved, four to zero, two abstentions, Gildner and Pop. Great. Um, so now is the time for public forum. This is the time for any person in the audience to speak on any subject not appearing on tonight's agenda. And there's nobody signed up. Does anybody out there want to speak on something not on tonight's agenda? Okay, then we will close the public forum and we'll move on to the public hearing. First case, case number MS-13-06, an application filed by William Stevens for approval of a two-lot minor subdivision with right-of-way dedication for property zone residential one, R1, located at 9801 West 32nd Avenue. Just a quick technical note for the audience. We'll have the presentation off to the side here. Our overhead projector is not working, but you'll see the same thing that you normally would. Um, good evening for the record. Lauren Mikulak, planner with the City of Wheat Ridge Community Development Department. I'm presenting case MS-1306, um, and I would like to enter into the public record the contents of the case file, the zoning ordinance, the subdivision regulations, and this digital presentation. Um, the property is within the city of Wheat Ridge. All appropriate notification and posting requirements have been met. Therefore, Planning Commission has jurisdiction to hear this case. I will start here with an aerial of the property. Subject lot is outlined here in blue, 9801 West 32nd Avenue. <coughs> Thanks. Can everybody see this one okay? Um, it's at the corner of West 32nd Avenue and Jellison. North is to the top of the screen. Um, along the bottom is 32nd Avenue. Kipling is to the left, to the west. It's shown in pink because that's a state highway. Um, and as I mentioned, the subject lot is a corner lot. There's a home existing on the southern half of the property. It faces 32nd and was built in 1955 before Wheat Ridge Incorporated. And the second map um, is the same aerial overlaid with an excerpt of the zoning map. And that yellow color that covers almost everything is the residential one zone district. So that's a single family zone district. Um, the only use that's allowed there is, is a single family home. Um, you can see that the property is entirely surrounded by R1. Most of the lots are developed. There are a few um, undeveloped lots. Oh, shoot. I forgot to switch both. Sorry. Um, there are a few undeveloped lots on Iris Court, and then the, the sliver on the bottom of the screen that's not shaded is Crown Hill Park, and that is actually outside of the city of Wee Ridge. That's in Jefferson County. So um, looking quickly at the subdivision plat that was proposed, um, it is a proposal to split the lot into two lots. We'll mo move into the graphical portion of the plat. Um, the proposed lot lines are outlined in blue. Um, as I mentioned, 
the property is zoned R1, and we won't be affecting the zoning or the permitted uses, um, but the tables on the right do show how each of the lots compares to those minimum lot width and lot size standards. Um, both lot one and lot two will exceed the 100 foot lot width minimum and the 12,500 square foot lot size minimum. Um, the other item to point out, lot two to the north will front on Jellison Street, so it will get access from Jellison. Um, the sliver on the bottom of the screen in purple is a right-of-way dedication. Um, 32nd Avenue is identified as a designated bike ped route in the city's um, bicycle and pedestrian master plan, and it is slightly substandard as far as width to accommodate those um, bike and pedestrian amenities. So whenever we have a subdivision flat, we look to see if there's any width that's needed. And in this case, it's a narrow um, five feet that will be dedicated by plat. Um, just a quick image of the property. So this is standing on Jellison looking towards 32nd. That is the existing home sort of in the background. And in the foreground is the vacant portion that's just currently um, an oversized backyard. Um, and one more view looking sort of due west, the new property line will be located sort of right along um, the natural break between where that driveway is and the landscaping ends. You can see that there's actually already a, a for sale sign on sort of the vacant portion. Um, as part of the application process, um, everything was sent on referral. We're not a full service city, so we typically send any requests like this to all of the utility districts um, and other city departments. And we had comments back that everybody can serve um, the, the property, so there were no concerns from the fire district, water district, sanitation district. Um, Public Works has reviewed and approved the plat, and the Parks and Recreation um, Commission has accepted um, a fee in lieu of parkland dedication, will accept a fee in lieu of parkland dedication. That said, um, staff is recommending approval of the plat uh, for the reasons that all utility providers can serve the property and the zoning code and subdivision regulations have been met. Um, oh shoot, I keep forgetting to switch both, sorry. Um, this plat will go on to city council because of the right of way dedication. So I have a correction that I had last time their suggested motion to, should be um, recommend to approve or deny. I think I made that error in the staff report. Um, but that's the end of my presentation, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Um, the applicant is in the audience. Commissioner Buckman? Nothing? No. Are you good? Just one question, please, for staff. Um, would this proposed subdivision, the existing home, on, uh, on the proposed lot one there on the south. Um, no variances would be needed. We're not creating a non-conforming uh, structure. Correct. Yeah, the home is well within any um, setbacks of the existing and the new lot line. Okay, great, thank you. Yep. Commissioner Pop? No. Um, no. Um, thank you. I have one question of the applicant, but we'll wait. Thank you. Uh, would the applicant like to come up and either um, give a statement or just answer questions? I have one question for you. You have to come up. <laughs> Thanks. It's fine. It's fine. I understand. So do me a favor. Say your name, spell your last name, and give an address, please. Thank you. My name is William James Stevens. Um, S-T-E-P-H-E-N-S, -E and I currently reside in Conifer, Colorado at 31488 Conifer Mountain Drive, Conifer. Thank you. Ellen, did you have any questions? Did you have, did anybody have any? I just have one question. Are there any ditches or ditch rights related to that property, the full-size property? No, there are not. The only ditch that are, um, uh, are there on the other, on the, uh, south side of 32nd Avenue, which I think, once again, uh, belongs to Jefferson County as opposed to Hood Ridge. Okay, I just wasn't sure, I wasn't clear, I didn't wanna go on the property too much, but it wasn't clear if there was a ditch on there or not. Mm -hmm. So there's not, okay. Did anybody have any other questions? That's it, thank you. So, 
Is there anybody uh, signed up to speak? It's okay. We got plenty of time. So is there anybody in the audience that wants to speak to this case that hasn't signed up? You have you can come up to the mic and speak. This is your chance. Okay then. Um, hearing none, I will close the public hearing on this case and ask for discussion or a motion. I'd like to make a motion. I move to approve case number MS-13-06, a request for approval of a two-lot minor subdivision plat on property zone residential one and located at 9801 West 32nd Avenue for the following reasons. Number one, all agencies can provide services to the property with improvements installed at the developer's expense. Number two, both lots are consistent with the R1 zone district standards. Number three, all requirements of Article 4 of the Zoning and Development Code have been met with the following conditions. Number four, fees and lose of streetscape improvements be provided prior to recording the plat. Number five, fees in lieu of parkland dedication be provided prior to recording the plat. I'll second that. Is, is that the language that we're looking for? Yep, okay. Okay, um, any other comments, questions? Okay, please vote. Motion approved, six to zero. Okay, that's it for that case. <laughs> so we need to move on to another case. So if you guys want, if you guys want to leave, you can. Or yeah, we'll give you time. Thank you. Have a good evening. Happy holidays. Oh, oh, oh. oh my gosh, there's two mouse mouses. Mice. So we will move on to case number MS-13-07, an application filed by Francis Durso for approval of a two-lot minor subdivision on property zone residential 1C, R1C, located at 3219 Benton Street. This is a little intimidating. I've got to apologize for my office you, equipment you can do right this. here in front of me, but... Um, so bear with me if I forget to forward the slide. Please let me know. Uh, so, let's see. Can you go big? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I can. So, uh, for the record, Meredith Recker, Wheat Ridge Community Development Department. Um, this is a request for a two-lot uh, subdivision plat on property zoned R1C located, located at 3219 Benton Street. Um, again, this is a plat that involves two lots, so we process it as a minor subdivision, just like we did the other one. In th this case, however, because there are no right-of-way dedications, uh, Planning Commission is the final authority on it, whereas on the prior case, it will go on to City Council for, uh, for uh, acceptance of that right-of-way. I'd like to enter into the record uh, the case file and packet materials, zoning ordinance, subdivision regulations, and the contents of this digital presentation. Uh, the property is located within the city of Wheat Ridge, and all proper uh, posting and notification requirements have been met, therefore commission does have uh, jurisdiction to hear this case. So, I did my slides in a little bit different order than uh, Lauren did. Um, in this case, uh, the property is zoned uh, R1C, which again is a single family designation. Um, this is a copy of the zoning map which shows uh, the location of the properties. Uh, this particular um, uh, lot, I guess, is made up of four different parcels and I tried to show that using the arrows uh, pointing to those. I don't know if you can see the lot lines or not. Um, and, and again, this is a copy of the zoning map, so uh, the property is primarily surrounded by low and single, uh, low density uh, and uh, multifamily types of zoning and uses. Uh, to the west, we've got restricted commercial, so it's commercially zoned, but we've got houses located in it. 
Um, the subject property, the light yellow, is R1C, which is, again, a single-family designation. And then across Benton Street, that sort of orangey ochre color uh, is R3, and there are, uh, there's a series of multifamily dwellings. Now, the reason that there were four different parcels, um, and you'll see that in the next map, too, is this uh, particular property was part of what we call the Columbia Heights uh, subdivision. This was a plat, one of the first ones approved in Jefferson County, um, approved in 1898, that divided this entire area from about Sheraton, I'd say over to Fenton, into a series of 25 foot wide lots. Each of those little teeny lots um, is about 3,000 square feet. They measure 25 by 125. And in this particular situation, the parcel that the house sits on is actually made of those four different lots. So just to give you a little bit, bit of background, so it's very typical when we have a homeowner who buys a house in this area that they will have two or three or four or five lots that make up their development parcel. You can even see on this that the names are different. Um, at some point, Benton Street was apparently Flatbush Avenue. So just a little bit of history lesson for you. So this is uh, the same aerial. Again, you can see um, it is outlined in tur turquoise, and you can see the four different lots with the improvements on the property. Um, the way the subdivision is going to be set up is that the existing single-family home, which was built in 1919, will be located on the southern two lots, and then the northern two parcels, which are currently vacant, will be separated off. Um, all four of the lots have frontage on Benton Street, as you can see. There is also an alley that runs along the rear of the property, coming in, I believe, from 33rd Avenue and extending down to 32nd. Um, as far as access to uh, the site, there is an existing driveway off of Benton that provides access onto the property. And um, as far as public improvements goes um, along Benton Street, we do have uh, existing curb gutter and sidewalk. So just a couple slides of the property. Um, so this is standing on Benton Street looking towards um, the lot. Um, you can see the yellow house on the uh, left side of the image. That is the house that's currently in place where the owners live. You can also see um, a fence and some parking pull-off areas. Um, the fencing to the northern portion of that is the vacant property, and I'm going to show a picture from behind. So essentially, you've got the house on the southern two lots and vacant property on the northern two. So this is taken from the alley looking um, back towards Benton Street. And in this picture, the vacant lot, which is going to be lot two, is located on the left-hand side. And then the house lot will be located on the right-hand side. The existing structure um, shown in the picture is the garage that I'm going to refer to um, as far as uh, being on that um, existing uh, house lot. And just one more picture, looking at the rear of the house, this is their backyard. Again, the structure in the, uh, on the left-hand side is that existing garage, which is gonna be taken down. So um, this is pretty similar to what you were looking at before. Um, this is a single page plat. And if you look closely, I know there's kind of a lot going on there. Um, uh, again, what they're proposing is to formally subdivide the, two lot, the site into two lots so that the existing home sits on its own lot and then the remaining portion of the property to the north um, can become a development site for a new single family. Um, both of the proposed lots do exceed the minimum requirements for the R1C zoning, which includes uh, 5,000 square feet of lot area with 50 feet of lot frontage. Um, I would point out that the new lot line um, is going to be located uh, so that all the existing improvements on the site, including the house, that existing garage, the driveway, are all located on lot one with uh, lot two being completely vacant. Um, there is an existing single car garage that I showed in the pictures. Um, adjacent to that newly created lot line um, that does uh, is in violation of the required five foot setback. Uh, the applicants have indicated that they would like to remove this structure and to ensure this we'd like to add a note that it be done prior to recordation of the plat. 
Um, I would um, not sure exactly how they will react to that. Um, so we'll get their input on that. Um, as far as uh, the rest of the document goes, we've got uh, the standard language for easements that go around the perimeters of the site. And um, again, all public improvements are in place and there's no additional right of way needed for the property. Um, as Lauren had mentioned, anytime we have um, a land use case like this um, come in, we do refer it out to all the outside agencies. And um, all of the agencies have indicated that they can serve the property with expenses installed or ex with uh, improvements installed at the developer's expense at the time of development of lot two. Now lot one is existing, they already have all their utilities in place, so that's um, not an issue. Uh, specific responses included the Wheat Ridge Fire District who indicated that they can serve the property. Uh, the Wheat Ridge Parks and Recreation Commission will require fees in lieu of, lieu of dedication at the time of recording. Wheat Ridge Public Works has reviewed and approved the plat and again, um, all public, public improvements are in place and both Wheat Ridge Sanitation X and XL Energy can serve the property. Um, staff is concluding, um, con has concluded that uh, all requirements of the subdivision regulations have been met. Also, all of the requirements of R1C zone district have been met for both of those uh, lots. So we are recommending approval. There are two conditions that were included in your recommended motion. One, a note be added about the, the garage demo, and then secondly, that the parks fee be uh, required prior to recording of that plat. And that does conclude staff comments. So if you have questions, I would be happy to answer those at this time. Commissioner Ohm? Yeah, I just have a quick one. And that one slide, it appears that basically on the, with, with showing all the homes and stuff, it looks like uh, uh, pretty much all the um, houses are, would you say, legally non-conforming? Because almost all the structures on the whole block are well, straddling property lines, right? That, you know, that part of that, this one, yeah. is that what you're looking yeah, at? Yeah, that one. Um, mm -hmm. The reason it looks that way is because it's the city's aerial photography overlaid uh, with the Jefferson County parcel map, so they don't exactly line up. I know Ken had the same um, question when he reviewed the report. He's like, I don't get this. It's like the lots are right in the middle. They, it's, they really are not. Everything shifts south. And the more accurate document is actually the subdivision plat, where you can see where those lots are in relationship to the improvements. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah. Okay. okay. I would I would just add quickly. So the parcel lines, like Meredith said, they actually come from the Jefferson County Assessor, so they're not survey lines by any means, and they're typically five to fifteen feet off. And in a neighborhood like this, where the lot lines are so close together, twenty five feet, the margin of error looks even more exaggerated than it does in some areas of the community. So that's why it's Thank even you, worse here. Sure. Commissioner Palm? Did you have any questions? <laughs> that's right. Commissioner Timms? I do have a, a question about the garage. Um, what is Wheat Ridge's requirements in terms of off-street parking for single-family residential? For single-family residential, if there's street parking, there are only, t there are if there's street parking, there are only required two parking spaces on site. If there's no street parking, there are, there's a requirement for four off-site parking. So either the existing home or the proposed home could just um, either utilize Benton or they could just do a concrete slab. They don't have to have a garage. Correct. Is that correct? Um, and my other question is, I understand that the Parks and Recreation Commission dictates park fees, right? <coughs> and I know that we've had that conversation several times. I'm just curious to know, since that is a condition though on this, what approximately is that park fee? Um, are, you, are you at liberty to, to yeah, answer absolutely. that? Okay. Um, based on our calculation um, today, I was kind of crunching numbers with Lauren. We were both looking at them. On this particular site, because of the smaller lot size, it's about 1,300 square feet, or $1,300, sorry. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Commissioner Gilbert? Commissioner Buckley? Well, uh, Commissioner Owen poached my question, so uh, I'll consider that answered. But I do have sort of an incidental question. Looking at that map, what is commercial zoning doing mm -hmm. in that neck of the woods? We like to blame Jefferson County. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> it's all it residential, it, it right? Is, it is crazy. Does it include part of the uh, part of the library there? Is that included in there? Add to it. Um, I think the library... Mm 
to school. Yeah. Yeah, because it's it's like across the aisle, across the street. Right. right? Yeah. And so so it's interesting if you if you look, you know, you can see where the existing parcels <laughs> are, mm -hmm. and then that whole row of restricted commercial on the corner. If you're familiar or went out there, is that dance studio? Yeah. But the the buildings to the north are are residential. So. We adopted the county zoning in 1969 after we incorporated, so it's just one of those kooky Wheat Ridge things. It's just something that hasn't been we modified. We, we, deal, we deal with it as the land use situation comes up. I see. Okay, thank you. Any other follow-up questions? Thank you. So now it is a time for the applicant to come on up. applicant <laughs> come on up so um do me a favor uh, state your name spell your last name and give an address please francis durso last name is d-u-r-s-o 2359 south balsam street thank you um did you have anything to present to to tell us as part of the application or you just want to nope, answer I questions they covered everything okay yeah. So we'll just check with the commissioners and see if anybody yep. has any questions. So, Commissioner Buckman. Nothing from me, thank you. Gilder? Ohm? Pope? Quick question. Um, are you, are you the, would you be, if this was approved, the builder of the house? Would you own this? Would you uh, build it and sell it? I'm just curious. Obviously, that can change. But At the current time, we're just purchasing the land. And what we're going to do later, we're not, we haven't decided yet. But possibility of building a single family obviously within this <coughs> current zoning sure um, and that's where we're at right now okay. we oftentimes just buy and hold the land itself okay and then you potentially could sell it or at a later date you don't necessarily have plans yourself to move there at this time is that correct no. okay thank you so much okay. and I have one question um, to Meredith's request that before this get platted that the garage be knocked down is there a concern with that is that acceptable? Um, that's, no, that's not a concern. We've been working with the owner who is present here, and we contractually are binded that that garage be taken down okay. before approval. And in order for us to close on the lot, we obviously need the plat approval right. for title. Okay. So. Okay. Just making sure. Yep. Didn't want any surprises here for you. Sure. Sure. Okay. Anybody have any other questions at this time? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for... Is there anybody in the audience, anybody signed up? Okay. Is there anybody in the audience that didn't sign up that wishes to speak on this? It's not scary. <laughs> okay. I, I, we just want to make sure that if you, if you have a concern or a question about anything with it, um, you can come on up. Come on up. I was looking at you. <laughs> Come on up. So do me a favor, state your name, spell your last name, and if you could give an address. Okay, my name is Linda Hill Schaefer, H I L L S H A F E R, residence 3245 Ames Street. Thank you. Okay, and I think it's probably been covered, but looking at the maps, it just really looks like the north edge overlaps where that next house north of it is. And I just wanted to clarify that indeed that was just a mismatch between the platting and the photo. Yeah, photo. Oh, good. Okay. Again, it's because of the way the parcel layer from Jefferson County lays on our zoning maps. So, so, so yep. Okay. So that was it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there anybody else that had any questions on this? Okay. Hearing no other questions, we will close the public hearing on this. Um, are there any questions or concerns? Um, then I will ask for a motion. I'd like to make a motion. Uh, I'll move to approve case number MS-13-07, a request for approval of a two-lot minor subdivision plat on property zoned residential 1 C and located at 3219 Benton Street for the following reasons. 
All agencies can provide services to the property with improvements installed at the, at the developer's expense. Both lots are consistent with R1C zone district standards. All requirements of Article 4 of the Zoning and Development Code have been met with the following conditions. One, a note be added to the plat document that the garage be demolished prior to plat recording. And finally, two, fees in lieu of parkland dedication be provided prior to recording the plat. Second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion approved, six to zero. Okay. So before we move on, did you guys want to stick around? You're welcome to stick. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead and leave while we set up for the next one. Thank you very much. Happy holidays. Thank you. We have one more thing to speak about a resolution. You're welcome to stick around. It's fascinating. I don't even find it fascinating. <laughs> should be about a half an hour and we should be done. Shall we test it? Shall we test it? Oh, I, 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 I'm giving you leeway. You'll give me a half hour. Thank you very much. <laughs> Are you ready for me? I'm ready. Thank you very much, members of the Planning Commission. It's been quite a while since I addressed this uh, commission. I'm happy to be here tonight. Um, we come before you tonight with a request to adopt a resolution, Steve. which... Uh, before you start, yeah. will you introduce yourself? We have a new commissioner. I, I, I apologize. I am Steve Art. I'm the Economic Development and Urban Renewal Manager for the City of Wheat Ridge. We come to with you tonight with a request to adopt a resolution approving a modification to the I-70 Kipling Corridor Urban Renewal Plan for the City of Wheat Ridge. Um, the reason we are requesting this tonight is because of a, pro a, a proposed development at the southwest corner of 38th Street in Kipling. Um, you probably know that it's the family thrift store site, Clancy's Bar, um, and Starbucks Coffee there. There is a developer there who has options on those properties there to demolish that center and rebuild a new shopping center on that site. The site is within the I-70 Kipling Corridor Urban Renewal Plan area. Um, the developer has requested that we do tax increment financing on there uh, through the Urban Renewal Authority. This will be the first time the tax increment financing will be used within that district, which means technically we start the clock on the tax increment financing for about a period of 20 years. Because this is the first time that we are implementing the tax increment finance on there, it is considered a substantial amendment to the plan which means we have to modify the plan. And specifically, we have to modify Section 8 of the plan, which is attached to this report. Um, Section 8 talks about the financing methods that are available to the Urban Renewal Authority for such projects. Um, by amending this plan, if you see at the very end, the very last section of that, we allow for this section with the uh, legal descriptions attached here into um, that we will be able to then enact tax increment financing on the project. Um, basically, tax in increment financing is um, any increased property or sales tax that will be generated on that property. The base is what it is today. Any increment above there would flow directly to the Urban Renewal Authority for use on this project as well as other projects within that Urban Renewal Authority area. Um, once again, we need to, we are required by law to come before, b by Colorado Renew Urban Renewal Law to come before this body asking that you adopt a resolution um, that says that this modification of the plan conforms to the city's comprehensive plan in Vision Wheat Ridge. I won't go through all of the elements, how it conforms, but within your packet there must be 50 or 60 highlighted in red how it conforms to the plan, economic development, redevelopment, jobs, a great buffer to the neighborhood around it, and a host of other elements that are contained here within the plan. 
that is my presentation for this evening, uh, commissioners. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer. But uh, staff does recommend tonight that you do uh, um, adopt the resolution, uh, adhering that it does conform to the city's uh, comprehensive plan. And then that will be forwarded on January 27th to the city council for their approval also. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Buckley. Uh, yeah, thanks for the presentation. Uh, just a couple of questions. Yes. So just to clarify, the, uh, the tax increment funding that you're describing that would be applied to this uh, particular development that's being um, explored, uh, financing from that would flow to not just that particular development, but to other developments along that corridor? It could. We are still in the process of negotiating exactly what the increment that would flow to that developer is. They have provided us a pro forma um, on the project. We have a third party uh, looking at that on behalf of the Urban Renewal Authority. They'll report back to us. We traditionally do not give 100% of any increment back to a project because then that doesn't allow us to use those funds that come in on other areas within the project area. Yeah, okay. Because my concern would be that, you know, while it is a substantial um, investment by any developer for that particular property and while you know, any gain there would certainly um, have some sort of uh, impact, uh, positive impact, hopefully, on the uh, area around it, which could raise property tax and the possible sales tax revenue around it. Uh, my concern would be if, uh, if, if there's a oversized amount of financing that goes solely to that area, um, we might not see that money completely returned back over to the pool of the Which is, w again, Commissioner, why we traditionally do never do give 100%. Okay. Now that money will flow to the Urban Renewal Authority, not to the city. I see, okay. Um, I guess that's the only question I have at the moment. Thanks. Commissioner Gilman? I'm good. Commissioner Gilman? Yes, um, I have a comment and some questions. Uh, my first comment is, uh, I was reading this as I was sitting at Discovery Park looking at that site and uh, um, this is very, very interesting. Um, my first question is, is uh, what are the limits of the I-70 Kipling corridor? You know, how, I mean, you don't have to tell me exactly, but I'm just, I'm just wondering, like, I, you know. It's our it largest urban renewal authority in the city. We have five urban renewal authorities. For the most part, it starts about Ward Road and 44th, um, kind of buffers the south end of the uh, the TOD site, the transit Orient design, comes down uh, 44th to Kipling, Kipling, and then it goes on the north side of also of I-70 and kind of meanders its way around the TOD site. Then it comes down south on Kipling all the way to 26th. Okay. And it really just kind of borders Kipling, you know, a block in on each side. It doesn't go really into any of the residential areas of the, mm -hmm. of the and then, and then, um, what? And I don't need to know the exact, exact details. But what, what is the determination as far as like for a project to determine like um, this one is uh, something that would be you know worthy of the of the TIF um, when you're looking at this for criteria? Well, certainly, and any TIF is is approved by the board of directors from the Urban Renewal Authority. Um, staff's sole job is to uh, do the analysis of any project and present it back to the the Urban Renewal Authority. And then ultimately the city council approves the amendment to the plan. If the city council chooses not to amend the plan, then um, we won't go through with the tax increment financing. Uh, what we really want to look for is investment into the property. And certainly if anyone has driven by this property, it, it is in drastic need of some redevelopment. So this is, this is probably, the, uh, besides 38th and Wadsworth, 38th and Kipling is probably a n the most critical site that we like to see redeveloped in the community. So we're looking at that. We look at potential jobs. Um, this project will bring in uh, the shopping center alone, the grocery store that will be coming in there will, approx will uh, 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 employ approximately 120 people. Um, there will be a senior uh, long-term care facility there with memory care. Um, primary jobs will be out of there, uh, up to 50 jobs there. So this site could employ almost 200 people there. Um, and then we also look at the, the general impact on the community. And this will be a very positive effect for that neighborhood. Thank you. Any other questions? Yep. Commissioner Pop? I guess my only question is the, the money that comes back to that area, is that when you're looking at the increase in, in traffic and um, 
you know, just activity in the area, will that be used to sort of compensate in any way? I, I know there's some reference here to infrastructure. Um, how, any specifics on how that will mitigate some of the increased traffic? So when we talk about infrastructure, um, Urban Renewal Authority money, TIF, TIF financing is only allowed to be used for public improvements. So we can't pay, if it's a grocery store, we can't pay for their freezers, their deli freezers that are going inside there because that's, that's really not a public improvement. We pay for the infrastructure. Um, by redeveloping the site right now, currently that site has very poor access. If you're coming down 38th Avenue, the entrance into the Starbucks, I'll say at the north end of that, really poor access there. Um, you're coming down Kipling, it pretty much is one long driveway cut all the way from the north end of that project to the south. So it's going to improve by working with CDOT to uh, get improved access points along Kipling. And then the developer wants to take that access that's by Starbucks currently and move it a little farther west, which would then be able to get them a, a left-hand turn movement into the shopping center, uh, more stacking as, as you enter the center. So it will improve the, infra uh, the infrastructure as far as what you see above the ground. We could also choose in a future date for the extra funds that do come into the Urban Renewal Authority. If we identify a need for a stop sign somewhere, <coughs> a stop light, we could utilize those funds to install that. Thank you. Thank you. A couple of questions. Um, in Wheat Ridge, is the Urban Renewal Authority What's the relationship to that in City Council? The City Council forms the Urban Renewal Authority and enacts the plans. It is the role of the Urban, Urban Renewal Authority to then carry through the City Council's wishes. But they are actually two separate entities. Are, is the authority appointed by City Council? Uh, yes, they are. Okay. Have they already reviewed this proposal? They have received a uh, presentation from the developer on the entire site. Um, we have to go through the it, w it would not behoove me to come before them to hammer out a deal if I can't get through this process okay. first. So they will be, but they know about what's going on okay. and they have given us the blessing to move through because the shopping center that's coming in, the senior t care facility, uh, the potential to take that Starbucks and turn that into a drive through there is very attractive. Okay. Um, and then on this particular, the, the TIF we're talking about, is this a sales tax and a property tax potentially? Correct. Okay. Um, and if this isn't approved for whatever reason by council, is this particular, is this developer relying on, is their project not able to get financed without it? It's, there's a huge gap okay. um, in, in what they're investing into the property. Um, all those property owners there, as most property owners do, assume their property is worth X amount when it's probably worth not quite X, but they have paid for that. Um, there's some large investment into there. and. Traditionally, rents that we leases we can get in Wheat Ridge are lower than other areas of the Denver area, so there is that gap. Okay, and then my final question on the Appendix A section, I guess, of the resolution, we have one A says date TIF implemented. I assume that would be filled in after City Council approves it, right? Correct. And then you've got all these nice legal descriptions in the very last one, right before the actual resolution. There's a D. It says TIF terms, and it's kind of left blank. Oh, that should not, I apologize, Commissioner, that should not be there. It, when I hit page break, okay. it added those on in the other three pages, and I was able to delete those. I didn't see those. So that, that okay, so that, that, we don't have to worry it's about that. be there, right. Okay. Um, those are my questions. Thank you. Thank you. So I have a couple questions. You need to educate me. Um, so is TIF usually used for retail? or for any type of zoning? Uh, any, it could, it could be used for any time. We will be using TIF on Perrins Row, the housing project at 38th and Depew will be using TIF. Um, it can be used for, it can be used for uh, numerous things. It is just a tool in the toolbox of urban renewal to help bring projects that otherwise could not happen unless that gap was, was filled. Okay, um, but the expectation is that the property will, will once it is, renewed once it is it will bring property values back will bring sales tax back etc but is there an expectation of what the property because this is a mix this is partial retail and partial for medical facility mm -hmm. which won't have retail or sales tax etc is there an expectation of how much money that this will bring in and does it need to meet any any certain guidelines. They have provided us a performer that shows what 
the anticipated sales taxes right now that property is creating uh, the entire property is creating about thirty thousand dollars in property tax annually um, after development you know i don't want you want i can't remember exactly but the, it's it's a much much higher it's in the three four five hundred thousand dollar range that they're bringing in in sales and property tax um TIF just as allows us to either go for property tax, sales tax, or both. And when they formed the plan, they allowed us to do both. And that's going to help us fill that gap in just a shorter period of time. So the only reason um, that we're hearing about TIF here is because it's part of the urban renewal plan for I-70. The reason we didn't hear about TIF on the Parents Row is because they're not in the urban renewal? They are in an urban renewal area, but at that time, our legal counsel determined that Parents Row was not a large enough project to make it a substantial modification to the plan. Mm -hmm. That modification solely went to the city council. It did not have to, by urban renewal law, go to the planning commission first. Ah, okay, because it's substantial. That's why we're hearing Correct. Okay, okay. I appreciate the clarification. Thank you very much. I don't have any, uh, yeah. I, I thought of a follow-up. Just to clarify on... You said there's about 20 years left. There's 25 years, I think, total for an urban Correct. renewal area, right? We have 20, about 20 years left on this one. If this is approved um, for this particular property, I assume then that the way this is written is TIF could be applied to anywhere within the Kipling urban renewal area? No, is it, this is only enacting on that single property. Is. That's the nice thing about Colorado urban renewal laws. Okay. We can do it one property at a time, so As it doesn't start the clock everywhere. Otherwise, you don't want to start that clock. We don't want to start it everywhere. Okay, thank you so much. I, I had one. Please. No, um, so what normal agreements are drawn out are X amount of dollars or X amount of years, whichever comes first. This project, while they have 20 years, they're anticipating only taking 12 years of the TIF. But the Urban Renewal Authority will be able to receive it for the life of the project. So if we're giving them $100,000 a year for 12 years, and then at that time we were getting 150, so we were getting 50 back to the Urban Renewal Authority, at the end of 12 years, for the remainder of the life of the plan, that extra 100000 comes back to the Urban Renewal Authority, which allows us to do even more projects in the area at a grander scale. So it's great for the community. Any other questions? I had one more quick question. Uh, just in the packet we received, the uh, land survey uh, graphic um, was really rasterized. It was kind of hard to make out I apologize. the exact uh, description. Um, it just ap it appears to me just just so that I can frame in my mind sort of the the site that's impacted by this uh, TIF here um, that we're looking at. It looks like it excludes. It basically has a right of way that's to the west of that Starbucks building and the little strip of buildings that are to the uh, south of that Starbucks. Uh, maybe that right of way is where the there's sort of an alley it, it's right the now. It's if you walked out to that site, it's that entire site which includes the Starbucks, the family haircuts. That little retail center behind there's a florist, a dentist, mm -hmm. and something, and that the family thrift shop, and then an entire building that includes Clancy's, the Bingo Hall, all. So that. all of that's included. It's, it's the entire project they're going to take down. Okay, because the the survey as as it looks here, just because the we can't quite make out the description, it looks like there's sort of a right of way that leads into the site to the south and that there's an excluded uh, parcel. Um, because that is only the Alta survey for that parcel, which is the family thrift shop, the part that says site. I see. And that's their, that's, that's a it's a weird lot. That little flag going out there is there, how they got a driveway to the Safeway at one time back whenever that was formed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Commissioner Bucknam, just to clarify, see at the bottom, it, it or on the side it says 10101 West 37th Place. Yes. So each of the four legal descriptions are four different parcels Correct. Um, in there. So you're right. That is only that the big one, but then the three other ones, uh, the uh, Starbucks and. Okay. I just saw since it was included in the packet, I assumed that the area marked site was the site we were talking about. So thanks for the clarification. You are more than welcome. Any other questions? Great discussion. Okay. So I believe I need. What's the terminology? I, there is language at the end of the report. There's, it's, it would be a motion, a motion? when there is language. Okay. I'd like I need to make a motion. Please. I move to adopt resolution 04-2013, finding the first amendment to the I-70 Kipling Corridor Urban Renewal Plan for the southwest corner of 38th Avenue and Kipling Street is in conformance with the Wheat Ridge Comprehensive Plan and Vision Wheat Ridge. I'll second that. Any discussion? Please I vote. 
Oh. Yeah, I'd just like to say um, you, could, you can tell Steve is really uh, excited about this project. I think this would be a, a good good project for Ridge. Huge. Can, yeah. can I can I just add something too? I, I, I agree with Commissioner Omentins. I think it's a it's a great opportunity. I'm not the biggest fan of TIFFs. I think the way that the authority has described sort of how they'll use the uh, excess coming in is uh, prudent. Um, I just would encourage the city council to uh, show some restraint in uh, uh, looking at TIFFs sort of as a, a cure-all or sort of automatic default position for any developer who comes in and wants to do some development because I think there are very location specific um, developments that would be developed there anyways say like a hotel or maybe even a grocery store that would respond or not respond to a TIF regardless of whether a TIF was offered but all of that said I will support the motion. If I don't feel that I know enough about how TIFs work it's no. That's my main point. Oh. No. <laughs> and if I may, commissioners, yeah. you're not approving any TIF this evening or anything. All you're doing is approving, approving that the modification adheres to all the aspects of the comprehensive plan. Right. TIF aside, anything like that. I, I'm happy to answer questions about that, but all you're doing is adopting the resolution that adheres. So if you believe that all the red points in there meet the goals of that, then I would encourage you to vote yes. But vote on your own conscience. Any other questions? Okay, please vote. Motion approved, six to zero. Other do we have any other items? Mm. <laughs> other, other items? Not really. We'd like to welcome our new uh, commissioner from District 4, Crystal Kapak. And, um, hopefully he got to introduce you. We were a little bit in a hurry, and uh, so I apologize about that. But um, welcome to the Planning Commission. So, yes, ma'am. So what's the plan for 2014? What are we going to hear? not related to cases. Anything on sign code? Uh, Lighting? <laughs> um, actually, the first meeting we'll be hearing, and I think we're scheduled for the first meeting in February, is the subdivision regulations. Okay. Which, uh, you know, they, they seem a little bit less glamorous than like zone change and that kind of thing, but they really are an important component of what we do. Um, we're looking at uh, changing you know, some, some certain things like uh, processes and we're trying to make s some things that uh, make more sense to be administrative, to make it easier for our applicants. But there's a lot of other items like design standards that are important as well. Um, and uh, I'm not sure where we are on sign code, but the signage and lighting are both um, something we're looking at. And then the other thing that's probably gonna come up pretty quickly is um, you know, we've gone to a little bit different format with our packets, with going away from the 24 by 36. So we're looking at some sustainability types of issues related to um, our land use case processing as far as, um, and that's kind of more of a housekeeping thing, nothing real glamorous, but probably those are the two things you're going to see first. Okay. Any, um, anything scheduled? Anything on the calendar, on the docket for January? Okay. Okay. Sounds like the first um, next meeting. Next meeting we'll be having is the February, the first meeting in February. Okay, and then I just have a question about the TIF, and and that um, and Perrin's row. Um, I, I d more of a general question. Um, do you think it would have had merit to bring up the fact that it was a. a potential TIF, would that have swayed it or should it have swayed it? As part of the land use decision? Yeah. I don't think so. Okay. But I but I understand, um, I don't understand a lot about TIF either. And I was just kind of thinking um, when uh, Commissioner Papa and I were meeting, I, was, I talked about us having some training. Maybe that would be a good subject. 
yeah. to talk about, especially they're since they're going to be coming back with 38th yeah, and Wadsworth. If they're using it as a tool, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. maybe a discussion on urban renewal in general. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah, so that, that would be great. Because there are a lot of, you know, the uh, a lot of urban renewal folks really um, – extol you know the benefits uh, the possible benefits of TIF but on the other side there are some studies that show that you know uh, on the whole t TIFs may may not really make that much of a difference so it would be nice to kind of get some more information from from staff in terms of sort of how they operate what what the track record is kind of wh when are when are they used when are they considered for use yeah now that we're talking about study are, are there I mean, we have sort of the boilerplate thing that Jerry Dahl and I do about quasi-judicial and ex parte contact. If there are other things like TIF and urban renewal powers that you think that we should, you know, review and talk about, please let us know um, if there's something that comes up that you have a question about. And I think that was a, a valid question um, that you brought up, um, Silka, just because I don't even understand, you know, that much about it. So. Those first two, I definitely okay. okay. Squeeze them in before thirty eighth can. Would it be would it, uh, what about uh, having a study session with uh, the council on tips? And their priorities. Well, I was going to say just on tips to have both of us at the same time. We have a we have a group think or a group discussion once a year with planning city or city council. Direction. I know. I have one last question. Um, staffing for you guys? Are you are you staffed now, or are you looking? Uh, the planning division is staffed. We've got the three full time with Wade coming on, um, and I think you've met Wade. Has he come? He's come to planning commission. He's never presented. Um, I do believe that we are hiring another combination inspector after the first of the year based on some of the large residential projects. We've got the Dowd Overlook, um, Perrins Row, and then Incarnation. So, so an additional inspector, which that kind of helps the load for everybody in the department. But yeah, we're at full staff now. Thank you. Okay, if nothing else, I'll move for a motion for adjournment. I'd like to move to adjourn. I'll second it. Please vote. Mission approved, six to zero. Happy holidays. Happy New Year. See you next year.